Hey everybody, it's Dana Joy from God Joy Creations back today to do a water coloring card. Um, I'm really not in a Christmas mood to make Christmas cards, so we're going to make this one with this cute stamp in this owl. I like the um, pattern that's on the front of this, and we're going to use some Tim Holtz um, watercoloring paper. So I'm going to go ahead and line up this adorable owl onto my paper with my Fiskars block. Um, if I sound like I'm rambling a little bit, it's because it is now almost 3.30 in the morning. As I tell you all the time, I can't sleep, so I'm up making videos. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and use some um, Versamark on the back of my owl. Because this owl is a little bit intricate with, you know, a little, um, a bunch of little spots, um, I want to make sure I get my Versamark on there right the first time so I'm just kind of checking to see if there's any areas that I'm missing and I'm going to go ahead and use just a, um, a couple more pats to make sure that I have that covered I don't want to mess this up so all right I'm going to go ahead and line up my paper on my grid make sure I get it on there straight and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and press it in the corner because we're going to be doing some watercoloring around the owl. So I don't want him like smack that in the center of um, the panel. So I'm going to press on pretty firm, make sure I get that good impression the first time. And let me take a peek, make sure I have it. Uh, I think I do. I think I have everything on there. And I'm just going to grab some of my Zing embossing powder. This is kind of like a bone, not a true white embossing powder. Um, so I'm going to be able to see my lines a little bit better after I heat emboss this. So I'm just going to tap out the excess. And I think it looks good. So let me go ahead and move that embossing powder out of the way so I don't end up blowing it all over my stamp desk. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab my heat tool. And we're going to go ahead and heat this up. Now what I like to do is make sure I allow my gun to heat up a little bit before I put it directly onto my paper so I'm not waiting forever for it to heat up. Okay, that is now done and I'm going to grab a cutting board, it's just an acrylic cutting board, and I'm just going to tape my image down onto my board so it's not moving one when I'm watercoloring it and two, it's not going to warp as bad because you know once you start adding water to paper is going to have the tendency to kind of like buckle on you. So I'm just going to go ahead and use some painter's tape. This is, um, I think I just picked up this tape from Lowell's. So I'm just going to um, line it up across the top. I'm not worried about if my line is really straight um, because I'm going to be cutting my panel down anyway. So I like to just do it kind of like across the top and a little bit on the bottom. Sometimes I might tape all the way around my image, but I'm not going to worry about this one. Like I said, I'm going to be cutting down the panel to put on a card, so I'm not too worried um, too much if it buckles too, you know, not a lot, but, you know, it's probably going to buckle some. So anyway, let's get started painting. So I'm going to grab um, an acrylic block. That's what I'm going to use for my palette, and I'm going to use some Distress Ink, some tumble glass, peacock feathers, and some chipped sapphire. So I'm just going to take the edge of my distress ink and um, put it on a corner of my acrylic block and that's where I'm just going to go ahead and pick up my color from instead of like having it on my mat where I am like famous for then running my white card over it and messing it all up so I'm just going to um, keep the ink contained to that little block. This is a good way to, to just keep everything compact where everything's not around and getting touched on and your fingers getting inked up. So I'm going to go ahead and start wetting down my paper and I'm going to play some music for you guys to listen to why I paint.
Okay, I want to go ahead and add in a little bit of pink. So I'm going to do the sponge sugar and the picked raspberry. Um, I'm going to add in some pink highlights so we don't have, you know, just a totally blue card. Again, I'm going to just use the um, side of my acrylic block to um, lay down my palette again because I know when I'm done with this, I will run my white card base through that ink and I will be having a hissy fit. So we're going to go ahead and start watercoloring again. So I'm going to switch back over to a little bit of music and you guys can watch me finish up this card.
Okay, I'm going to finish heating that up, and now I want to add a really nice background to my owl so it doesn't look like he's just like floating on white paper. So this is when that chipped sapphire is going to come in. I don't feel like cleaning my acrylic block, so I'm just going to put some of it on my acrylic mat. And I'm going to go ahead and wet down a fairly large paintbrush and go ahead and start saturating my paper. So this way the distressed ink will kind of move free flowing um, around my owl. Back to some music. Now since we have the background done, I'm going to go ahead and remove that tape and get it out of the way. And it actually leaves a really nice border, but you know, I had a little bit of seepage underneath at the top, so we're just going to cut it down anyway. So now what I want to do is add a little bit more movement to my panel. So I'm just going to grab some water onto my brush. And you know with distress ink if you put water back on top of it is going to like leave white spots so I'm just gonna tap around and leave some like water droplets all around the background of my um, owl so it gives it like a cool um, like wavy technique almost like maybe if stars are sitting behind him we'll go with stars because I think that sounds pretty cool and it's early in the morning so yep stars is going to be so I'm just going to add a few more spots and as you can see the water is reacting with the paper so you can kind of see it coming to life. Pretty cool effect, right? Really, really simple too. See? Pretty cool. Okay, all of my mess is out of the way and here is my completed card. Kind of a different card for me but I really like the water coloring effect on this and that owl is kind of cute. So I just threw some ribbon on there and a sentiment and we're done. Thank you guys for watching me. I will see you guys back here soon. Interested in seeing some more of my videos? Please feel free to click on one of the above or make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go forth and be crafty.